delivers you with your own mind, your own emotions, uh, your, your, your own condemnation uh, to, to an officer or some personage that then mentally or emotionally or by word places you in a prison confinement to where they make you the guilty one and you go through that punishment. That happens. People many times will not accept their blame, will not accept their responsibility. They make you the offender. And despite the true, the, the true case or the true facts of the case, they simply, because there's no reconciliation, they don't follow God, they don't follow prayer, they follow their own will, their own spirit, and they make you the offender. They put you in a prison as a confinement. They put you in a confinement with others. Yeah, not, not that you take heed to it, perhaps. Uh, I've had this experience in my life, in ministering, in preaching. I've had people put me that I could not reconcile with them on just principles. I tried. I've tried to reconcile. I tried to go the Bible route. Well, how do you get released from that? You release, if it's an unjust cause, then you release yourself through the blood of Christ and say, I cannot satisfy, I cannot satisfy them, I commit them to Christ, and I take the blood of Christ and cover me and be free from it. Okay. Uh, do not let condemnation, uh, condemnation should not be with the child of God. You, you should not walk in condemnation that's a, that's a because you do everything. Pardon me? That's a prison within itself. That's a prison within itself, condemnation is. Uh, don't live in condemnation. Uh, don't do it. I mean, it, uh, that's one of the points I'm strong in. Mm -hmm. I will not let people put me in condemnation when I know that I have to be true to God's word. If I'm true to God's word and I do all that I can do by his word, they're not going to lock me up in a box and put me in condemnation. I am free. Whom the Son hath made free is free indeed. I, I will not accept their condemnation, their judgment. That's, that's them. They have to stand before God. You know? Um, see, the, the parable, and some night I'll be teaching on this in the church, in the 25th chapter of, the, of Matthew, the parable of when Jesus comes again, when the King returns to judge the nations, and the nations are gathered before him. There's, I think it's five or six basic questions that he's going to determine who the sheep are and who the goats are and who he sets on his left hand and his right hand and who receives judgment of the unjust and who receives the reward of the righteous. One of those is they will go to him and they will say to him, uh, he said, you will come to me in that day and you will say, uh, when I saw thee in prison, I visited thee, uh, or I will say to you, you visited me. Uh, when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. That's four, isn't it? And there's, I think there's five or six things there. Um, that, and, and, and they will say to him back, Lord, when did we see thee and do these things to thee? Minister to thee in prison. Visit you when you were sick. And clothe you when you were naked. And give you drink when you were thirsty. And he said, Inasmuch as you have done it, have done it. In other words, visited in prison. Visit people in sickness. Uh, minister to people when they were hungry. He said, inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, his children, his people, the church, you have done it unto me. So every time that you're ministering to a person, a soul in need, or you're feeding them, spiritually or naturally, or you're clothing them with God's word, or with a garment God's given you, or, or they're in a prison. Now here's that word prison. Not, not the port out here necessarily, not the port, but you look and see in the church, here's a soul sitting over here, and you can tell they're in prison. Yes. They're depressed. 
They're lonely. They're fearful. They're afraid. And you neglect them. You won't approach them. You won't try to pray with them. You won't try to at least put out your hand to them and minister, feed them, give them drink. Uh, then he said, on the other hand, where he sets those that go into judgment in the resurrection, this is the resurrection when he comes again, when Christ comes again, and the millions stand before him. He said, then if you didn't do this, and they come to him and say, Lord, when did we see you in prison? We didn't visit you. When did we see you hungry? We didn't feed you. He's, he will say to them in that day, inasmuch as you have not done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have not done it unto me. So that, that's the judgment. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I see that I have a chance to visit someone that's imprisoned in sin, in loneliness, in fear, in hurt, in pain, in rejection, and I, I don't minister to them. I don't minister to them. I see they're there, but I just go by your will, go by my way. I am going to lead myself one day to where he will, the penalty will be that that he describes in Matthew 25. So it's a very important thing uh, that uh, when Jesus was using these words, uh, prison, adversary, um, uh, that we, we obey his word. You say, Brother Marlow, how can we stay on the positive side of our faith and live in joy, live in peace, live without condemnation? There's only one way for me, you follow his word. Follow his word. I said one way, there's actually two. Listen to the Holy Spirit and follow his word. Listen to the Holy Spirit and follow his word. Listen to his Holy Spirit and follow his word. And you can live on this earth like Jesus advised us and taught us to do. So uh, this is a very sound lesson that we're receiving. Anyone else with any comments or questions? Because this is, this is practical gospel. You know, before I get to heaven and I see the angels, I see you, and I'm with you. And we can talk about going to a place we've never been, and we can talk about seeing angels and being around, but I'm not there. But I sure am with you. Right here, right here. I'm right here. Yes, sir. It's not, it's not, I'm not going to live in the misty yon when I'm living in the present. I'm going to do what I need to do try to be in as much as possible. And I fail, I stumble my toes, and we all do not justify ourselves. We, we, we want to do what the gospel, that's why I wanted to go through word by word, verse by verse, some things Jesus said, and try to understand them as much as we can. Anyone with any questions or comments on this? Anyone? It's a class. You can you can ask. And don't feel it be foolish, or that we would not appreciate it. I think so many times the prison is the prison of the mind, don't you? Pardon me. I think so many times the prison is the prison of the mind. I th I think yes, Sister Marla. I think you said, Brother Butch said, and I touched on it. The prison. I don't think there's any prison in the world that is more full of inmates and humanity, the prison of their mind. Um, the mind is an entrapment. You can let your mind be without the scriptures to give you hope, your mind be without faith, your mind not feed on positive things, and your mind will become a prison. Real prison. A real prison. Right. The only way that doesn't happen with me and it won't happen with you is read this word, rehearse this word, pray, study, surround myself with the right environment. Don't let myself get to where I'm entrapped with people that are negative thinkers that uh, live outside the uh, realm of, of, of hope. Um, because life is hard enough, life is cruel enough, life is 
something that I tell you, if you live the life that I'm living, and I think I am in your world, the world I'm in, somebody said, uh, life is fair. I don't believe that. I've never, I, life is not fair. It is not fair. Uh, I don't think Jesus wants me to believe that. It isn't fair. Uh, but Jesus is fair. Come back to Jesus and his word and the teachings of the scriptures. See, I, I don't endorse the Koran. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't endorse the various, the various uh, parts of literature that, uh, that leads me away from the scriptures. The scriptures I find life in, I find hope in, I find joy in and peace in. And that's what I'm going to embrace is the scriptures. So uh, have, you, have you enjoyed the Bible class up until now? Very much. Well, I, I hope that uh, I wanted to go back in, in another. Next week I'll open up and we'll depart just for variation, just for not making it uh, completely monotonous in its theme to you. But uh, I, I would I would like for you to come uh, into the Bible class next week and select one question that you have that you don't feel you have a complete fair answer on, and you have many, and I have many, but one concerning the last days, and the last events before the coming of Jesus, before his coming. What is to take place? What do we see that is uh, going to take precedent? And the scriptures are, are even in your curiosity of your mind. What What is there that must precede the coming of Jesus? And then the actual coming of Jesus. Is it literal? Will the human eye see it? Will everybody's eyes see it? Only cover a, a, a part of the the eastern part of the world, the western part. Will it cover the whole uh, space of the globe of the earth? How will his coming be? Uh, is it one phase and one phase only? And what does he come for then if it's more than one phase the first time? What does he come for in the next phase? And then after he comes, it, where does he go? Does he remain in heaven? Does he come back to the earth and stay here a short time? Does he actually live here? Um, um, these are things that I'm just starting your mind with. Um, the millions that go to heaven, uh, do they stay in heaven? Do they come back to the earth? Uh, if so, Will the earth be renovated? How will it be renovated? Does the Bible teach anything on these things? Does the Bible teach on how many uh, go to heaven and how many uh, live in heaven and uh, does some come back to the earth and live? Um, what is the word translation? Um, what does it mean, transformed? Uh, is the word transformed any different than the word translation? Um, am I going to be translated and am I going to be transformed in what way does it affect my spirit soul and body does it affect part of me all of me um, I'm just stirring your mind up to think now that's one area and uh, then there are many other areas of the scripture that you can probe and study and that's interesting to me to study the scriptures yeah. I will still have more questions when I finish the last day I open this book than I have answers. That's normal. I don't think a deity expects me to understand deity completely till I behold deity and see him face to face. But he sure wants me to study. He wants me to study. Paul said to Timothy, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So I, I thank you for the time you've spent, and we're going to just um, uh, let the rest of the evening be yours to fellowship and to uh, enjoy uh, in whatever way that you choose to 
do that and can. But I appreciate you coming tonight, and I hope that you feel the Bible study is always profitable. Amen. For comfort, for strength, for understanding. I pray that it will be. To you on the Internet, may God bless you, and may God go with you wherever you are across our nation. Okay, last chance to make any comment or to ask any questions. All right, we're satisfied with tonight. May God bless you.